Okay, so on this test to solve quadratic equations, we have learned solving by graphs and tables and solving by factoring. So keep in mind that you have different methods to solve the same type of problem. Any of those methods will work. Um, it just depends on your preference, what you're comfortable with, and how the problem is set up. So for example, this first one, what are the zeros of this parabola? I know that a zero means an x-intercept. Sorry, it's too late and apparently they want me to go home. All right, um, so x-intercept. So I'm looking on this graph and there's never an x-intercept. This doesn't cross. So I know that there's not one zero at negative three. There's not one zero at five. It has no zeros. It cannot be factored, okay? That's what it means when there's no zeros. For the next one, a table of values for quadrat quadratic function g is shown. State all of the solutions for where g of x equals zero. g of x simply means y. Where is the y value zero? So looking over here, I see a y value zero there and a y value zero here. There are two solutions. 90% of the time there are going to be two solutions. So it is at negative two and at three. If one solution to h of x equals 12, what is the value of the other solution? Again, h of x just means y, and I see a y value of 12 here at 1, but it wants the other solution. So quadratics have these things called symmetric pairs. 0 goes with 0, 2 goes with 2, 6 goes with 6. So I know that 12 is going to match up right here. I just need to continue my table on. So 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. This is going to be negative 6. Here's another similar question. One of the solutions is that f of x equals 17. So right here, it's where it equals 17. What's the other solution? So I need to find some pairs. 2 goes with 2. 5 goes with 5. 10 would go with 10. 17 would go with 17. So now I have to go back two spots. So this would be negative 6. This would be negative 7. What are the x-intercepts of that graph? Well, it didn't give me a graph, so I'm going to look on my calculator. 4x squared plus 2x minus 6. And I'm looking for the x-intercepts. You can estimate them here. And it looks like it's like at negative 1 and a half and then 1. Let's check on the table. At 1, that is one of the solutions. So it can't be B and it can't be D. So let's see if it's at negative 2 or negative 3 and a half. So if you click second window, you can go to whatever number you want. Okay, so I'm going to go to negative 2. Nope. So let's do second window again. Let's go to negative 3 divided by two. Second graph. Yes, that is your other solution. That is where your zeros are. Six, what is true for the solutions to the graph to where f of x equals zero? f of x simply means y. Where is the y value zero? Beep, beep, beep. So we're looking at this x-axis. So it's right here at six and right here at negative 1. So 6 and negative 1. So both solutions are positive? Nope. The solution is the y-intercept? No, it's the x-intercept. Solution is the vertex? Nope. One solution is positive and one is negative. That is your answer. Here, they want us to find where f of x equals negative 3 f of x just means y. So you go on your y-axis to negative 3, and there's one solution, but you've also got to go all the way across, and another solution is at 4. So it's at 0 and at 4. If you forget how to draw your line, if it's y equals, remember your slope man? You've got to remember his face tattoo says x punched him in the face. And he's asking himself, why? Okay, 
these lights really need to stay on. Okay, because it's y equals a number, we know we're going to draw a horizontal line to see where our solutions are. And it's right here at 4, and it's right here at 0. All right, which statement about this is true? Okay, so you could, they're giving you the factored form. So we could factor this. Okay, so there's not a GCF. Nothing can divide into all of those terms. So in the first box, I put 3x squared. In the last box, I put negative 15. And I need to find the factors of 3 times negative 15, which is negative 45, that add to give me 4. That's what's in the middle spot. So in your calculator to find your factors, if you don't know your factors, negative 45 divided by x, and then negative 45 divided by x plus x. So I don't want decimals, so the second window, let's just go back to zero, second graph, and I'm looking for a positive four over here, right there at nine and negative five. So nine x, negative five x. Right away, I know I need to plot the negative because that's the first thing I see. The factors of five are just five and one, 15, it's five and three. They both share a five. 3 is 3 and 1, 9 is 3 and 3, they both share a 3 and an x. These both share a 1 and an x. These both share a 3. So your factors are 3x minus 5 and x plus 3. 3x minus 5, x plus 3. 3x minus 5, x plus 3. So it's got to be either a or d. And then to find the zeros, to find these solutions, okay, you're setting it equal to zero. You set each one equal to zero. So 3x minus 5 equals zero, and x plus 3 equals zero. To solve for x, add 5 to one side, which you do to the other. So 3x equals 5, divide by 3, divide by 3. So x equals 5 thirds. To get your other solution, subtract 3, subtract 3, so x equals negative 3. So your solution is A. Now, maybe you don't want to do all of this work on your test. They're asking for the zeros, which means x intercepts. So I can plug this in my calculator, 3x squared plus 4x minus 15, and I'm looking for where it equals 0. 1 is going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, and the other one is at negative 3. So it couldn't be either of those because they don't have the negative 3. So we need to see if it's at 5 thirds. Second window, 5 divided by 3. Yes, at 5 thirds, that is the other solution. 9, find where f of x equals 2 f of x means y. You're looking for where the y value is 2 going across. It's right here at negative 2 and at negative 4. Make sure you're getting your two answers for most of these questions. Okay, they want us to solve this by factoring. Which, yes, we need to solve it by factoring, but on your test, put it in your calculator. We've got a 2x squared plus 6x minus 36, and in y2, we've got 0. So nasty numbers, so second window, let's just jump back to 0. So there's 1 at 3. And negative 6. Now, I am going to practice factoring because I know that you all need help with this. I first notice that all of these numbers can divide by 2. So if I'm going to do it to this side, I'm going to do it to this side. So we get x squared plus 3x minus 18. And 0 divided by 2 is just 0. So now I'm going to factor this. In the first box, I put x squared. In the last box, I put negative 18. 
1 times negative 18 is negative 18. It needs to add up to give me 3. So you can do it in your calculator. Negative 18 divided by x. Negative 18 divided by x plus x. And you're looking for a 3 in this column, which is happening at negative 3 and 6. Negative 3x, 6x. This is just 1 and 3. This is 3 and 6. Right away, I know to pull out the negative, and they both divide by 3. x squared breaks into x and x. If this is a 6x and this is an x, this has to be a 6. So your factors are x plus 6 and x minus 3. When you set each one equal to 0, it's going to give you the opposite sign. So your x equals a negative 6 and a positive 3, which is what I got for my calculator. Which equation has solutions of x equals 4 and x equals negative 2.5? You could plug these in your calculator and see which one gives you your answers x minus 4, x, oh, 5x plus 2, and I need it to equal 0. So I need the solution to be at 4. Yep, that works. And negative 2.5. Second window, negative 2.5. Nope, that's not it. Okay, let's try 2x minus 4 and x minus 2. Second trace. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, so I need it to be at negative 2.5. Nope. Okay, so we've got x plus 4 and x minus 2.5. Nope, don't match it. Negative 2.5. Did I do this one? x minus 4, 5x plus 2. Second window, negative So this one doesn't have an answer. None of those are correct. It should have been, if I'm going to find these, x minus 4, because it's the opposite of that. And if it's x plus a 2.5, you can't have a decimal. So we need to multiply everything times 2. So this would give me 2x plus 5. Those should have been your factors. So normally, on your test, those will work out. Okay, on 12, which equation can be used to find the roots? Oh man, this is a lot to have to do, right? We need to distribute this negative 2, so we get 8x squared minus 3. When I distribute this negative 2, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6x minus a 4x. Okay, well we can combine these on this side, okay? So 8x squared minus 3 equals 6x minus 4x is 2x. Then we need to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 2x, subtract the 2x. So I get 8x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And now I can factor this. So in the first box, I put the 8x squared. In the last box, I put the negative 3. So I need to find the factors of 8 times negative 3, which is negative 24. That add to give you a negative 2, which is going to be a negative 6 and a positive 4. Negative 6x, positive 4x. Right away, I know to pull out the negative. Both of these numbers are divisible by 3. Both of these numbers are divisible by 4, and then x, 2, and then x, and then 1. So your factors are 2x plus 1 
and 4x minus 3. Okay, which one is equivalent? Okay, so in my class we talk about how you need to eat your Doritos before class. The first step is to expand. This right here means negative x minus 4, x minus 4 plus 6. Okay, so after you've expanded it, we need to distribute. We need to distribute this negative to both of those parentheses. So we get negative x plus 4 times x minus 4 plus 6. The B stands for the box. I'm going to do the box with these parentheses, negative x plus 4 on this side, x minus 4 on this side. x times negative x is a negative x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Negative and a negative is a positive 4x. Negative 4 and 4 is a negative 16. Add the diagonal. So my box gives me x squared plus 8x minus 16. But you're not done. You've got the C, and that's to combine it with this original plus 6. So your equation is x squared plus 8x minus 10. I'm sorry, negative. This is negative. Negative x squared plus 8x minus 10. So this one right here. To check our answer, you can put the original. So negative x minus 4 squared plus 6. And in y2, I'm going to put negative x squared plus 8x minus 10. Those are nasty numbers. Let's do second window. Let's go to 0. And every single thing in this table is the same. That's how we know we did it correctly, because they are equivalent. They're the same. Which equation shows this line shifted three units down? Remember I hod over? To make a vertical change, it needs to be outside the parentheses, and it's exactly what you think. We are going to subtract 3 from that y-intercept. So y equals 3x minus 5. If you want to check it, they're telling us 3x minus 2 and asking us to shift it down 3. So 3x minus 5, this should be shifted down. There's your original. There's your new one. It was here, and now it's here. We shifted it down. All right, what is the equation of the line perpendicular? When it's perpendicular, we have to flip the sign and flip the fraction of the slope. So if right now the slope is 2, we need the slope to be a negative, and instead of 2 over 1, we're going to make it 1 half. So we need the slope to be a negative 1 half. So it can't be b and it can't be a. This is point slope form, okay? So y minus blank equals blank, parentheses x minus blank. If I want it to go through this point, so we know the slope is negative 1 half, the y value is negative 7, the x value is 2. What makes Ms. Smith unhappy? This double negative right here. So I change that to y plus 7 equals negative 1 half x minus 2, which matches this one right here. All right, the Kutach family took a trip to Disney this summer. There were nine total people. Each child ticket X was $37, and each adult ticket Y was $54. They spent a total of $452. Write the system of equations to represent the situation. Nine people, that's your X and your Y. People plus people equals people. When we add money to it, 37X plus 54Y, money plus money has to equal money. And they're telling us that the X was $37 each, which is why the 37 went with the X. And the 54 was Y, was each adult ticket was $54 each. So X plus Y equals 9, 37X, 54, right here. 
What is the vertex? The vertex is the middle of the rainbow. So when you match up two, two, five, five, in the middle is this negative three, one. That is your vertex. If you were talking about the axis of symmetry, it's just the x equals of the vertex, which is negative three. What is the y-intercept? To find the y-intercept, you're looking for whatever matches up with zero in the x. So when I match up zero with the x, zero, 10 is your y-intercept. Which equation could represent the graph? Well, let's see if my solutions or my zeros are at negative one and six, I need my factors to be x plus one, because it's the opposite, and x minus six. That would be my factored form. x plus one, x minus six, this would have to be my graph. If I forget that rule, just plug these in your calculator. Let's see which one matches that. x minus one, x plus six. That does not match that. Okay, what about x plus 3 and x minus 12? That does not match that. Okay, x plus 1, x minus 6. Yes, that matches. That is your solution. All right, what is the first step to solve this by factoring? Okay, so we just talked about this on Monday of this week, that to be able to solve it by factoring, you have to have it set equal to zero. Well, this doesn't have it equal to zero. To get that equal to zero, you have to subtract the 15. Subtract 15 from both sides would be your answer. All right, the area of a rectangular court can be represented by x squared minus 2x plus 19. And they're telling us that the area equals 34 square feet. What is the x value for the situation? I'm going to do it on my calculator. It didn't tell me how I had to do it. So I'm going to do x squared minus 2x plus 19 and see where it's equal to 34. So I see an answer at 5, but I know there's normally two answers, and negative 3. So does that mean that's my answer? Because I see a five and a negative three. The situation, we're talking about area, we're talking about a court. So that means this is distance. Can you have a negative distance? No, you can't. So the answer is only gonna be that positive value. On number 22, y'all haven't learned quadratic formula yet, so you can use whatever method you want to solve this. I'm gonna use my calculator. So x squared plus 4x minus 40, and you're looking for where it equals negative 8. There's one here at negative 8, but I know there's normally two answers. So right here at 4. Let's say that I don't have a calculator at home, so Ms. Smith, I can't do this. Yes, you can. You can do it by factoring. First, we have to get it set equal to zero. To get rid of a minus eight, you add eight, add eight. So we would get x squared plus four x minus 32 equals zero. Then you can put it in the box. x squared in the first box, negative 32 in the last box. So we're looking for the factors of negative 32 that add to give you four. And it's gonna be an eight and a negative four. So eight x, negative four x. Right away I know to plot the negative, and that's a four. This breaks into x and x, so this has to be eight. So your factors are x plus eight, x minus four equals zero. You take each factor and set it equal to zero. So to solve this for x, you subtract eight, subtract eight, x equals negative eight. 
add 4, add 4, so x equals 4. Get you the same solutions. All right, for the function, which equation below represents f of x? You could just plug these in your calculator and look at them. x squared minus 6x plus 8. Let's see. It's hitting at 2 and it's hitting at 4. Let's use the y-intercept 0, 8. Yes, it is. That looks good to me. Okay, let's try x minus 3 squared minus 1. 0, 8. 2, 0, 4, 0. That looks good. So right away I know it's got to be all of the above. But let's just check this last one. x minus 2, x minus 4. got the point zero 0,8, it's got 2, 0, it's got 4, 0. Yes, all of the above match. Now, let's say I'm at home. I can pull out my zeros from here. This has to be 2 and 4. Yep, that's what we've got. This is vertex form. You can pull out your, pull out your vertex. Your vertex is at positive 3, negative 1. If you remember, I hod over inside the parentheses is the opposite, so the x value becomes a positive 3. Outside the parentheses is exactly what it says. So this negative 1 is stays a negative 1. And my vertex is at 3, negative 1. Standard form, you don't know how to graph from standard form, but if I know that those two are correct, it has to be all of the above. All right, write the equation in slope-intercept form. This is what we did at the very beginning of the year, and some of you forgot how to do this. You isolate opposite side. To get rid of a 5x, you subtract 5x and you write it side by side. So we get negative 3y equals 12 minus 5x. The final step is to divide everything by a negative 3. So we get y equals 12 divided by negative 3 is a negative 4. Negative and a negative is a positive 5 thirds x. So here's your answer. All right, what is the solution to the system? Well, to find the solution, I need to graph it. So for this first line, I'm going to start at 2, and it's an x, which just means your slope is 1. Up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I could also go down, down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1, down 1, left 1. I can't graph this line until I've solved for y, so I'm going to isolate. To get rid of a 4x, I do minus 4x, and I write it side by side. And then the final step is to divide everything by negative 2. So I get y equals 12 divided by negative 2 is a negative 6. Negative and a negative is a positive 2x. So I start at negative 6. And for a slope of 2, I'm going to go up 2 over 1, 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 up 2 over 1. So your solution is right here at 8, 10. Fantastic. All right, so if you have any questions on this, make sure you ask your teacher um, or go to tutoring and make sure that you get everything done by Thursday.